take two on this photo bin right here. Somebody called the house right as I was almost at the end of doing this, and I have a phone right up here in the studio. So uh, I took the phone off the hook, so I, I shouldn't be getting interrupted this time. Let's go back. This is Weedsport, okay? But in 2011, it had a name that it only had for one season. It was called the new Cuga County Fair Speedway. Eric Kingsley was actually at the helm, and I've got a few bins from this year that I'll try to get to here in a little bit, but this was the first one. This was May 10th, 2011. It was a practice session, and obviously, you know, you can see it's kind of overcast and uh, looks kind of cool this day, so there were not a lot of cars there, but I wanted to make sure that I got this one out there so that we could look at it. Um, here's the Ruggles team. This was when uh, Daryl was running with Alicia, uh, in this point and and they were running 600s right there and you can see what they did with the hoosier tires too they, they made the white into pink for alicia so that uh you know and of course uh, a lot more pink on her car but this was when she was still learning and uh now she's running 305s another look through the pit area there's the number 33 the doug emery owned car you want to know who's driving that you're going to find out here in just a little bit so uh some 360 sprints some micro sprints some pro stocks um, Sportsman and, of course, Modifieds were all here on this particular line. And one late model, as you can see in the middle there. I got a better picture of that here in just a little bit, as well as a vintage car from a guy who's been um, doing that kind of stuff for a long time out that way. That's Alicia Bay right there, Alicia Ruggles at the time. And she's getting some advice before she gets ready to head out on the racetrack. Tim Sears Jr., unsponsored, number 83X. Uh, still fairly new in the game at this point, I believe in 2011, and obviously he's running Modifieds now. That's his uh, uncle's car, and I'm going to talk about treads here in a little bit. So take a look at that right rear. Notice the tread pattern on there. It's almost like little S's on there, and I'm going to explain something about tires here when we get a closer look at one of the micro sprints here in just a little bit. This is Rich Appleby's car. He, of course, not only races in the vintage right now, he's working uh, at the uh, Dirt Hall of Fame. Uh, doing a lot of stuff with them and i'm not sure if he's still doing any vintage stuff or not but if he had a business for a long time he was actually making uh cars so um you know hot rods for people at this point um man for the life of me i can't remember the name of this guy right here he did a lot of stuff he was working in the booth i remember at brewerton um for a while and again same thing here not sure who this was again but man this was a late models were were, I think, still gaining in popularity uh, in the area. When Tim McCready went late model racing uh, from Modifieds, it spurred a lot of other people, and it spurred the interest in the area, and the crate late models were still pretty good. You can see the uh, bow tie symbol on the hood scoop there. Um, that's how you know. Hey, what do you know? I've been looking for a picture of James Graham for a long time, and he's been messaging me a lot, going, Don't, I know you got some pictures of my car here somewhere. Well, here you go, James. And I did send it to him through Facebook. So Jimmy Phelps, the home car. This was the car that uh, had his dad owned, and this was done right out of dad's shop. JMB Installations, of course, has been with them for a long, long time. There you see Rich Appleby's number one good-looking car. I love the, what he did with the, uh, the way he did the number there as well. Earl Rudy. Always good for a win about every year, and I know I'm pretty sure he picked up a win on this season, although I'm not quite sure, uh, now has his own business. And we had him on just the other day, and we got another one coming up with him in a little bit where he talks more about what he's uh, got going on this year. So if you missed that one, go back. I believe it was just over the weekend that we aired that one. Tony Steiner, and what makes this car unique... No green. I think this is the first year that Tony Steiner did not have green on his car. And you'd think that would bring some good luck, but as you're going to see later in the bin, it didn't on this particular day. There's the double zero, of course. Mike Welch still running out at Canada Will Weekly. Finished, I believe, top three. Maybe even top two in the points there. Now I'm thinking about it somewhere in that range. Of course, he's now a dirt official behind the scenes as well. So here's the track. Looking at one and two. Some micro sprints out there having a little fun. And as you can see, one and two still looks pretty much the same. But Eric did make a change to the track, and there it is. This is three and four. So you can see turn three still looks pretty much the same up here. But right there, no concrete barriers. He went with little dirt mounds instead. So it kind of opened it up. It made it so a little more forgiving because uh, occasionally you do get pinched down low coming off of turn four. And instead of hitting a jersey barrier, you'd hit a little dirt mound, which would pop it up a little bit, but wouldn't uh, rip the whole front suspension apart. And what was the old line from back in the day? Anybody who lives in the central New York area and listen to central New York radio knows, you know it's summer 
when they're rocking in Weedsport. Did a lot of concerts back then on this stage right here. A lot of great acts. Um, a lot of acts that went on to do some great things and some that were kind of one-hit wonders, but there were a lot of concerts in there. And, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun to see some of that because uh, I know Dirt filmed a lot of those uh, and have those still in their archives. And it's a practice, so obviously there's not many people in the grandstand area, as you could imagine. And in case you're wondering what the blue building is right there, that was a pit concession area right there. So, because sometimes the Enduros would park down there, and once you're in there, you're in there. So, it was kind of tough to get out. Sportsman, that's Dave Marcatelli, uh, James Graham, and of course, uh, Tim Sears Jr. out there taking some laps. And you got a better look there as you can see the dirt mounds. They weren't too tall, maybe two feet at the most, but it was enough to keep drivers out of there and not so much that it would wreck the car. I told you we'd tell you who's in the 33. Well, that's Sean Donneth. Now, look at that right rear tire. And I'll explain something. Remember I told you to look at the pattern on Tommy Sears' car? This is what's called a block tire. And the reason they call it a block tire is because if you look right there, they look like little blocks, don't they? They run like that, parallel, and then at a 90-degree angle. So that's a block tire. They had an open modified show a few years ago because block tire is, is a lot better than the, than the pattern that the modified use, a lot more grip on that. And a few years ago, they had an open show somewhere, and they didn't specify no block tires. And the guy that ended up winning had block tires. It created a whole big thing. Uh, but the next time they had an open show, they made sure to say no block tires. And there was somebody there checking out the action that day. There's my daughter, Allie. She was nine at the time, so it was nice to see her. Of course, she always wanted to race, and I'm so glad that she had a chance to do that. Some modifieds making their way out on the racetrack. I believe the 16 is Mike Bowman. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, and, and, and so that's Tony Steiner, Mike Bowman, I believe, uh, Jimmy Phelps, and Tommy Sears all getting ready to head out. Remember I told you Tony Steiner was not going to have a good day? Well, this is why right here. I'm going to turn the camera down just a little bit so you can see the marks on the racetrack. See that? That's what happened to him. He slid, hit the right rear into the wall, backed it in, and I believe it was a clip, new rear clip that was needed on that car after that. So here's a micro sprint. A little bit look at that. Of course, they were running those at Paradise Speedway at the time. You have to shift those 600cc motors. Um, very quick little cars and a nice trainer. If you're going to run sprints, although you're shifting with your left hand instead of your right, there's a little shifter right up there. Uh, not the easiest things in the world to drive from what I understand, but boy, if you want to learn how to drive a sprint, uh, you do one of these first and, and then you go from there. So that's it from this one. Like I said, I didn't have a whole lot here, but since this was an Eric Kingsley deal, I wanted to make sure that, that I got that out there. Eric, you treated me like gold that year. I had a lot of fun working with him. I was working with Syracuse.com then and doing some writing. So it was nice to be able to deal with somebody I considered a friend as a promoter. We miss you, buddy. And uh, we, we say prayers for all his friends and family and everybody who was real close to him. And, man, we're going to miss you. Hit the blue E down there. Subscribe. Let your timers be doing something cool. You guys have a great Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow with more.